Hi, everyone. Yep, I'm still having a bad mental health day. And it's hot as I think you all know already. So, fans here, it's gonna blow my hair. So, first, I, I feel like it's important to do this video today and as fast as I can. So I hope this will be uploaded by this tonight. I want to explain why the pinned post on my page is saying that the Chimo helpline didn't answer. Yeah, they didn't. But I'm not blaming them. I, I know that, you know, there's a whole backstory of not having enough of whatever. And I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We're going to get there. But first, I got to give you some context. As in, how it got to the point where, you know, I need to call them. And it's going to be a little difficult. I'm trying my best. Um, I already know that sometimes I'm hard to follow, so I've got notes and I'm trying to follow them. But I also am purposely doing this on a day where I'm having a bad mental health day because it's all part of exactly what the problem is. With mental illness, I mean, it has more than one thing. And sometimes the after effects of whatever you're going through are actually worse than the symptom. They're worse than the actual panic attack. They're worse than other things. And maybe it's not talked about enough. I don't know. Maybe it's all blumped up. But I think it's important to show it to you. And so you get to see me and, you know, all my glory of messing everything up. Like that. So I can follow my notes. So where do we start? I don't know. But let's just start somewhere. Let's, let's try to get people help. So I'm going to start where I think the beginning is, which was Monday. Monday for me was what I call a good day. They happen every once in a while. And on a good day, it ends up kind of being like a bad day. Monday, I did so many things successfully. I don't even have a count of them because things were just going so fast. One of them is I fixed this TV. There is a video of that, but this one is more important and this one will come in time. It took me all day because I did the things between it. And that's where, you know, ADHD, high functioning auto, whatever the heck I have, doesn't matter. They all came together and I ended up at the end of the day like this. Hi. Thanks for sticking around. Um, it's 9 o'clock here in the evening. So I've been at this for like 12 hours, which has actually been one of the best days of my life since like, recovery. Just gonna keep getting better. Did something I liked. Proved to myself that I could still do it. And through the whole time, I had this like factoid thing going in my head. Because that's what I am. I've got stuff. So I'm putting it together and I'm thinking, you know, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty, you know, sat on a wall, whatever how it goes. Because my brain just, it's not braining much right now. But who knows what Humpty Dumpty actually is? It's not an egg. I don't know who invented him as an egg, but it wasn't a him and it wasn't an egg. Humpty Dumpty was actually a her. And it was a cannon. It was the cannon that defended, I can't remember, I think it was like London Bridge. Yes, that's what it was. It was the cannon that defended London Bridge. And it was like the biggest cannon, you know. And that was their big thing. It was the biggest cannon and that's why they kept winning. Nobody was attacking because Humpty Dumpty was there. That's what they named the cannon. Like, look it up. This is true. And at one point in time, the French, because that's what the British fought against, realized if they crumbled the wall that was underneath Humpty Dumpty, because it was very heavy, because it was a big cannon, it would crumble, and if they didn't have the cannon, they wouldn't be winning the war. That's where the Humpty Dumpty thing comes from. It's not an egg. I don't know where it came from, but Humpty Dumpty is a real thing. It was a cannon. It defended 
London Bridge. And then there's been the song called London Bridge is Falling Down. I don't know. <laughs> I had to stop thinking. But today was like the best ever. So yes, things get better. Keep working, keep trying. Recovery, I mean, it happens. Don't ask me exactly how, but just keep going with it. Apparently therapy works somewhere in there. Great friends, maybe? I don't know. Thanks. That was me at the end of the day. And I knew I was gonna crash the next day. One, I've been there before, and it's part of, you know, I just know myself. Thankfully, I do. Some people don't, you know, but no shame on those who don't, okay? But during that day, I had so many things going on in my mind. Like, there was just so much brain activity happening that that's why, like, the end, that what you just saw was my end of the day. And I purposely filmed that because I knew that anybody who knows me will say, yeah, you were super hyper. My original diagnosis way back when was bipolar. And that really video looks like I'm in a manic state. Someone who's manic, it really looks like that. It wasn't that, it was just, there was just too much going on. Like things were just firing and crazy. And I mean, yes, I, I have meds and whatnot for ADHD, but every once in a while, I mean, it happens. Now, I'm saying it was a good day because I accomplished a lot of things, but I also messed up a lot of other things too. Like this. I dropped my mirror and I broke it. I do so many things and there's so many things, you know, that other things don't happen. But still not my point. My point is that there was going to be after effects. And those after effects are what led to the whole thing about me having to call Chimo. Now, how can after effects lead me to call Chimo? I was just hyper for a day or what? Well, not really. So again, there was just waste. My brain just had an overload. So by Tuesday, it's kind of a thing I say, my brain wasn't braining. Nothing was computing. Things were going the wrong way. I actually tried to type out a status on Facebook and I typed it backwards. Don't, don't ask. I don't know how that happened because it freaked me out as much while I was doing it because I was like, why the heck is this going backwards? Like the whole Ariana Grande, how she puts her Twitter upside down. Like, it looked kind of like that. I'm like, what, what did I do? How, how did this happen? I, I don't know. It's just processing things because it just had too much that it did before. So on Tuesday, things just were not computing. It was just not making sense. And I mean, it left me in a way, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, it was like confusion and obviously fatigue because I was up at 6.30 and I was wide awake. So yeah, I don't just help people in the Moncton area. I'm gonna repeat it for a millionth time. I don't care if you publicly support or publicly like my page. That's not what I'm in it for. And the reach that this page has, I can see it in the analytics. And you know what? That's not for you, it's for me. I do this because it's something that I want to do. It makes me happy. And I'm helping, you know, it's my thing. And if nobody wants to pay attention, then nobody would. But people are. And I was up at 6.30 in the morning helping someone because I'm not on Norway's time zone. But neither did the person in Norway. It, it wasn't, it wasn't because they were, you know, trying to be mean or anything like that. Yeah, it's just kind of far away in those time zones. 
But either way, that's a after effect of the brain activity that I was going through the day before was, was still happening. It just wasn't happening in the correct sequences. So I was wide awake anyway. So the whole day, like I said, there was this confusion and fatigue, but it still left me with an overall sense of nothingness and sense of not being on earth. And in my DBT skills, we practice that. It's called being present, being in the moment. I wasn't. I wasn't like not in the moment because I was not trying to use my skills. I couldn't be in the moment because whatever was going on in my brain wasn't letting me. I tried to have some few conversations. Thankfully, there's a few people out there that understand how I go from, I'm trying not to do right now, that they were able to follow a few things, but other than that, I, I didn't really do much, which was all right, was my plan. But I was supposed to put in an extra shift at work to replace something else that happened. And in that whole confusion of, you know, me not paying attention, I accidentally locked myself out of my apartment. And this is the important part. This is the crisis. Now, for some of you out there, locking yourself out of your apartment, you know, may or may not be a huge thing. For me, it was. My landlord, the person who owns this building, he lives in another province. He's about a four to five hour drive away. And for people's security, you know, nobody has a set of keys. I don't have a set of master keys, even though I'm the resident, right? So my option at the time was to call the locksmith because it was like after hours. Now, I'm already panicking, but I'm trying not to. I'm really trying not to. I thought I would have time to just like maybe jimmy the door, open it, get my keys, go to work, you know, come back. It wasn't happening. In my panic and all that time, I couldn't figure out how to contact a locksmith because my brain wasn't braining. Things weren't making the connections. Nothing was connecting. Nothing was working. I didn't know how to get a hold of a locksmith. Now, if you think about it, it's pretty easy. You take your smartphone and you Google locksmith. Did I think about that? No. It didn't come to mind. I did call every single person on my call list on my phone. And that part really pushed me to the part where I was really panicking. Because three people answered. One, my best friend Mel. I happened to be talking to her while I locked myself out. No point. Sean, my other friend, but he was already at work. And he, had, he needed to do his shift. So, you know, do your shift, buddy. It's okay. So my sister feels horrible about this. And it's not her fault. She shouldn't. We talked about it. And I'm going to put it out here to let you all know, again, this is how much things just don't work when you're panicking, when you're there. Things that, for most people, are like, yeah, common sense. Common sense is all the window. I called my sister, like I called everybody on my line, and she didn't answer. Now, I just figured maybe she was busy, I mean, just got a life. She's got a husband and two kids and a job. But I forgot that she is the person that's there for me more than anyone. And we have a thing, like if it's an emergency and I text her, like I need you like right now, she will pretty much drop anything and save me. But I forgot that option was there. However, I still think the rest of this is still super important. Not everybody else out there has a sister like mine that I can email, text, whatever. Again, thank baby Jesus for good neighbors and an amazing landlord. The neighbors realized they helped, they tried everything they could. They're the ones that got me the number for the locksmith and it was $90. I don't have that kind of money. I don't.
And the third person who answered the phone was my dad. As in my stepdad, who's that? Who's my dad? My biological father, I don't know. Not the point. But my dad works in Pointe Sapin. If anybody doesn't know where that is, probably not because it's middle of nowhere. But it's past the Kushibwak National Park, where I'm from, by the way. That's like a two to three hour, I don't know, a long time drive. And he was like, well, sweetie, call your landlord and see what he'll do. And if he can't do anything, I'll drive there and fix it. Dad, I love you. With the courage that, you know, from talking to my dad, I called the landlord. And he was a little bit like, well, whatever, call a locksmith. And um, I was like, well, I can't afford that. What do I do? He's like, well, I'll be there on Sunday. And I was like, well, where do you want me to go till Sunday? I can't get in my apartment. And flustered and, and whatnot. And this is where I got to go with, he's an amazing person. He doesn't have to put up with as much things, you know that I go through with anxiety, but he does anyway. Because I, I hung up and at that time I just had enough and this is when I was walking to the back of the building to be alone to call the Chimo helpline because I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the money. How the heck am I gonna get in my apartment? And during that time he tried to call me back but he couldn't hear me, you know, there was wind going because I had earphones and I was just like, dude, like I just can't talk. Just, just, just don't. And that time he kept texting me because he recognized that I was stuck and he cared and he kept saying you know what I'll call the, the locksmith for you and I was like I don't have the money I don't and I'm calling the Chimo helpline and there's this message that keeps coming up this automated message we are currently busy helping somebody else please call again later and me being me, didn't think about myself. I started immediately thinking about, oh my gosh, what about everybody else that has tried to call this phone number as a last resort and has gotten this as an answer? I thought about everybody else before I thought about me. That's just me and later on in the night again, I realize that's my strength. That's how I get through things. That's why I have this platform. This is how I heal. All of you give me strength. There are things that I'm not going to mention that I do to help others that don't need to be mentioned in public. You don't need to know about that stuff. And that's it. I know, and that's what gives me strength and that helps me. So. That's why I put the post about the Chimo. And it took me four hours. Like I kept trying just to see. Because I know the problem is they just don't have enough fun. They don't have enough people. I know that that's the problem. But it was four hours before, I mean, I posted. And when I put the post up, it had been four hours and it was constantly that message of please call back. Now, in the middle of all that, my landlord sent me a text and he's like, look, the locksmith will be there in about 30 minutes. I'm paying for it and we will figure something out later. And that was just... All right, I do need to keep this short, I know. I'm hoping this makes sense and I want to explain what I'm trying and working on and who I'm working with so that this doesn't happen to somebody else. Because again, I'm thinking of other people. Because after the Chimo helpline you know, was busy, I did call like a mental health. I mean, I have someone that helps me with mental health. And I pushed the zero button, you know, an emergency and someone answered. And um, their answer kind of was like, well, I need your Medicare number in order to help you. And I was kind of like, uh, not in a nice way. What effing part of this, me being locked out, do you not get? Now, that is worked on, being addressed. I've let them know about that, and 
they came back with the fact that the Chimo helpline, they also know that I'm not the only person that's busy. And they are behind me for what I'm about to tell you right now. I decided, you know what, I'm going to do what I can. And what I can do is, as a private citizen, I can talk to my MLA. Because what it falls down to is that they don't have enough funds. The funds aren't given to them. They don't have it. They don't have what they need. And that's what we need in this town. I mean, as for all of this, I have reached out to Charlie at the Humanity Project. I will link the screenshot of what I sent to him below here. I've gotten no answer. None. But that's the whole other story, right? So, I reached out to the MLAs. It also happens to be election time, so good timing. Now, my MLA currently is Sherry Wilson. There is a post on my page about her. I did give her the chance this morning, she's the first person I called, to help and rectify and do something about it. Hasn't called back yet. But when I did reach out to her for help back in March, if anybody remembers or not, I will post the link to the video where the whole envy housing meddling thing on purpose happened. I reached out to her then. And after two weeks of back and forth of whatever, her answer to me was, I'm conservative and the liberals are in power. I can't do anything to help you. And don't waste your time with the Minister of Health because he's a liberal and he's a waste of space. Sweetheart, that's not very professional. And I told you that I was not going to forget about that, and I haven't. I really hope that people hear that message, because I don't think that's professional. Let's move on to positivity and change and what is probably, hopefully, going to happen in the future. Because, yeah, the person that answered again was Susie Campus. And when I called, I didn't know it was her. I thought I was talking to like her secretary and I was saying, you know, maybe she can all be with this and she listened the whole time. And about after 10 minutes, she's like, yeah, by the way, you're talking to Susie. So I'm not doing any of this to plug her in here or, or whatever. I would have backed anybody that would have helped me in this cause. And I don't want to make this about politics. But when I spoke to her and she explained to me like what she's running on that her platform is this exact subject I could tell just by the way she put the sentences together and I'm going to give them to you and you will understand hopefully like I did she gets the whole picture that it's not just one thing because what she told me is that she knows that we need more money we need more investment we need more resources in the mental health system, in the addiction system, because those are the root causes for the homelessness problem, for the low income, for all sorts of other problems, system-wide, social-wide problems, come from the fact that the root problem is we don't have enough mental health and we don't have enough addiction services in the city. and. If she's elected, her plan is to help us to get more of that. And that is a beautiful thing, and I do hope that that happens in the future. I'm putting all my positivity and my hope in that bucket that hopefully somebody will get elected, and that's what they're going to do, is put more money to help the addictions and the mental health services in the city. Because again, Chimo, if they could, they would have answered my call when I called. They would have. They don't have the capability because it's just not there so i'm just hoping that someday they will have the capability and i really pray and hope that nobody even though i'm pretty sure people have called as a last resort before ending their lives and gotten that message not because chimo didn't want to but because they couldn't and speaking from a suicidal point of view because I've been there if that's your last resort call and you get a message that says we're busy please call back later 
their thought most probably was and is well even the emergency helpline don't care that nobody cares about me and unfortunately a few days later somebody would have buried a loved one thank you for sticking around to the end i'm sorry that it had a somber last ending but that shock value really needs to be there for people to understand how important mental health emergency services are because we don't have them. If you want to post, ask questions, or whatever, go for it, please, I'm here. If you have any other ideas, please, I'm here. And again, we're here to help each other. You help me more than you know. Thank you.